Hey everybody, this week we're taking a look at a new pen acquisition from Newton Pens. This is the Newton Pens Townsend model. Most companies kind of overdo it with their boxes. Newton Pens does it right. It's just a simple white box with the uh, company logo stamped on it. And on the inside, uh, kind of something I wasn't expecting, which is a custom pen sleeve with the Newton Pens logo on it. Normally, I'm not a fan of this particular color blue, but for some strange reason, it kind of grew on me. So kudos to Sean for picking that one out at random for this pen. And now for the star of the show. This is the Townsend model in what he simply calls a blue, gold, black, yellow acrylic. For me, it kind of looks more like the oasis in the middle of a desert, or uh, if you've ever seen those tiger's eye gems, it reminds me of a tiger's eye with a lot of blue in it. And I think that's actually what drew me to this particular pen. I also like what he did there with the logo on the cap. It's very subtle, and when you see it in the right light, it's beautiful. Kind of like here on the nib, you can see it there. The engraving is subtle, yet it adds a lot of character to the nib itself without distracting. I find a lot of artwork that is stamped or engraved onto a nib it tends to be over the top and gaudy, but I think that the way Sean does it really does help accent the pen itself without taking away from it. So the Townsend does come with a Schmidt converter to complement the number six Jowo or Yovo nib, however you want to say it. Um, honestly, I don't know. I always call it Yovo, but I could be wrong. Wouldn't be the first time. So let's go ahead, cap the pen really quick, and take a look at what we're going to be using for today's writing sample. We're going to be using a new ink that I'll be reviewing next week called Robert Oster Carolina Blue. This was the special edition ink that was done for the Carolina Pen Company, and I'm also forgoing writing in Rhodia. For this one, we're going to be using my Endless Works uh, Tamoy River Paper Notebook with the Penchley logo and a statement stamped on it. Also, before we get going, I wanted to give you a little bit of a size comparison. So this is the Townsend next to a Sailor Pro Gear Rialo. As you can see, the Townsend's a little bit longer, uh, capped, and when we take a look at them side by side uncapped, it's actually a much more significant difference in length, with the Townsend being almost three quarters of an inch longer than the Pro Gear Rialo. Now, next to a Keras Customs Decograph, it's actually only about a quarter inch to a half inch difference. So it's a significantly long pen, but it does give it a little bit of an advantage in the fact that I can write with this thing unposted. And if you do have bigger hands, because mine are about medium, medium large, you can post it and it's gonna fit pretty much every hand you can imagine. So enough talking, let's go ahead and get into the actual writing sample. Oh, by the way, um, this is a broad Yovo nib, and Sean tuned it fairly wet, and you're going to see how apparent that is here in a few moments. So I know the light is making it a little hard to see there, but you could see like when I was writing the word Carolina, you could actually see some of the uh, some of the reflection off of the still very wet ink. And I'm going to be showing you close ups here in a few moments of each of the sections of the writing sample so you can see how it looked on the paper itself. Before we take a look at the first close-up, let's go ahead and do everyone's favorite phrase to test out a pen or ink.
The younger and more playful part of my mind wonders if the dog ever gets annoyed at being called lazy all the time. Hmm. So let's go ahead and take a look at our first close-up. I mean, you can see with the massive amounts of shading here how wet this nib really is. And I'm actually glad that Sean tuned it this way. I like a wet nib, and this one checks all the boxes for me as far as feel and flow. Now let's go ahead and do an upside down writing sample. And we're also going to see how immediately wet the upside down and right side up sample are. You can see there it smeared quite a bit upside down and right side up the ink was still pulling so much that it just immediately disappears here. And let's go ahead and do a test that I like to do with a pen to see whether or not the feed is going to keep up flow-wise with any type of writing I'm personally going to do. I'm not the fastest writer for that. You want to see people like Stephen Brown, who he can write extremely fast. Me, I write a medium to medium slow, but I've had pens before that couldn't keep up with the crossbars on the T's when I do the this then that that I did at the bottom. In this case, I'm not gonna have any issues with that at all. As you can see, the shading is still just as strong on the final that as it was on the very first this. And overall, even writing upside down with it, I was impressed. It gave me a really good feel. So let's go ahead and bring it home and take a look at the pros and cons for the Newton Pens Townsend. Pro number one has to be the fact that I can use this pen without having to post it. It's a very long pen capped and uncapped. It maintains a lot of that length. The second one for me is the color. Like I said earlier, I really love this tiger's eye pattern, and the blue and the gold are just a perfect match. The third one is this super wet nib. As you can see in the earlier writing sample, I'm getting a whole bunch of shading on the sheening ink. I know I'm gonna be getting it just because of how much ink it's laying down on the paper. Now, the fourth reason is one that I really haven't covered yet in this video. And that is the price of the Townsend. So we're getting a custom acrylic pen with a good nib and tuned to, well, any reasonable request. And all that shipped for $172. Now, I could have paid an additional $30 for a custom grind. But honestly, with what he did with that stock Yovo nib, I'm happy and I couldn't ask for any more. The only real con I'm going to say here is I got lucky. This particular pen, I don't believe is a colorway that he has in regular rotation. So I had to get extremely lucky, like I was saying, and find this pen on his Instagram feed. You can see it right there, uh, second from the left. And if that hadn't come across my feed, I wouldn't have gotten this pen. Someone else probably would have taken it before I had a chance to buy it. Now, that's not to take away from the wonderful pens that you can find over at newtonpens.com, which I highly recommend you check out. Link will be in the description. One more pro, by the way, this pen sleeve. I wasn't expecting it, like I said earlier. And the fact that he included that in the price just makes this an even better buy. So, where does that put it overall? Now, to get a 10 out of 10, it would have to be like a perfect Arushi lacquer, 
Danny Trio or something like that. I don't know, some grail pen I don't have yet. But for everything you get for the price and the feel of the pen, it's definitely an eight and three quarters out of 10 for me. All in all, I really like it and I think you should give Newton pens a shot as well. And no, this isn't a paid advertisement. I paid full price for the pen. So if you liked the video, definitely hit that like button. If you didn't like it, you know what to do. Either way, subscribe to the channel, support the channel over on patreon.com slash the ink 12 and follow the channel on Twitter and Instagram at the ink 12. That's going to do it for this week. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.